big intellectual battle of our time is going to be individualism versus collectivism. And, um, you know, that battle is not totally won in the, in the West yet, either. Uh, I think the, you know, the actions of the U.S. and doing things like I invading Iraq, uh, you know, have turned out to be a, a very poor advertisement for Western freedoms and democracy because, you know, we've gone around and meddled in the affairs of another society and created this awful hornet's nest by our meddling. Uh, that's not a great advertisement for the virtues of letting people solve their own problems, letting them figure it out for themselves, letting people rule themselves. You know, that's, uh, uh, that's a, a debate that right now I'm, I'm afraid the West may be losing because the, you know, actors like uh, the U.S. government under the Bush administration have been, uh, have been doing things that are not consistent with the values of individual freedom. Well, I think the, um, you know, people um, people can kind of forget where, how they got to where they, where they are. You know, we forget as Americans that we got to where we are through individual freedoms and by letting people rule themselves, you know, letting our local communities solve most of their own problems, letting our states solve their own problems, the constituent states of the United States. Um, you know, and we suddenly start to think that maybe we're somehow kind of culturally or technologically or intellectually superior to other cultures and we can go in and invade them and fix their problems. And, uh, you know, that totally contradicts how we uh, achieved our own development. You know, we didn't have anyone invade us and fix our problems. You know, we, we fixed our own problems in a homegrown way. And so I think, you know, the the U.S. Has, has kind of lost its way, its, its founding values, and some of its uh, foreign policy adventures, its military adventurism overseas. Well, first, do no harm. Uh, that's, there's, a, there's a diet plan that somebody told me about that uh, was being marketed a while ago. It was just called Stop the Insanity. <laughs> just stop the insanity. Stop. You know, stop invading other countries, stop uh, uh, pouring bushelfuls of money on corrupt governments, uh, stop, you know, twisting countries' arms to adopt the kind of reforms that experts in Washington and New York think that they ought to adopt, which is really the wrong way to go about implementing uh, any ideas like free markets or democracy. It, it can't be imposed and coerced on other societies. Other societies have to freely choose uh, their own freedom, you know, that's freedom, uh, it's, a, it's a ridiculous thing to think that we, the West, can impose freedom on other people. That contradict, contradicts the very idea of freedom. Freedom arises when people freely choose to protect their own freedoms, to seize their own freedoms, to assert their own freedoms. And so a lot of what the West can do is just stop doing the stupid things that it's doing now. And then once it stops, once we get to that point, then I think there is some, you know, positive things the West can do as far as exchanging intellectual ideas, exchanging technologies, making available technologies, making available our institutions of higher learning to students from all over the world, uh, you know, f allowing free trade in goods so that uh, African cotton farmers can sell their cotton in our markets, which we're not letting them into at the moment. Uh, that, that kind of thing, I think, is mainly what the West can do.